Good afternoon, Hello. evening, everybody. Hello, everyone. See Myrtle oh. already modding from panel. Myrtle, <laughs> stop modding from panel. We have very capable mods in the chat. There's mm -hmm. no need for you to mod, Myrtle. I just wanted to get that link in there once, and then <laughs> after that, I'm done. Just yeah. putting it in the, in the beginning. And also, uh, the link to the book is in the description of the oh. uh, the stream. Thank too, you. So. Mm -hmm. Does Myrtle get like all the abuse each each week? Myrtle, are you starting to feel that way? That no, you know, that, no. Okay, okay, <laughs> no. good. We we pick and jab at each other. Every it's day. true. Okay. So Myrtle is uh, the one who always has then. the just... impeccable um, like mod skills and it's true. Up on He's top. so like, fast. Myrtle, yeah. And I'm the worst mod. And always the best dressed. The best dressed. I'm the worst dressed. I mean. <laughs> I well, you know, at least you guys aren't doing, you know, like shirtless Mondays, because that would be a weird. <laughs> that would be like, really bad. And, you know, I was glad that you guys stopped that because you were doing it like, you know, before. And it was just <laughs> very, very, very odd. So I'm glad, you know, that you kind of uh, stopped that thing. Yeah. That would not be good for me. Also, it, it snowed here today. What? It's very cold. So it's... over on Saturday, it was in the 80s. It was 83 degrees. And um, it is not that now. It is pretty cold. What zone are you in, Kelly? There, I am zone six A. Zone six A. You're six A, and you got snow today. Oh wow! Yeah, That's just wacky. how it goes. But um, you know, I I haven't planted any of my gardens. I haven't. Mm -hmm. I do have some. I do keep things year round in in tubs because I heat my tubs for my fish. Oh, I see. So mm -hmm. my lotuses, they are throwing coin leaves already, and my water lilies are they've thrown out leaves. But I'm going to divide them. Probably, I don't know, the next couple of weeks I'll divide them. So right. I usually divide them in the spring, and then I I give them to people. So. Yep. But uh, the lotuses, I'm not going to divide them this year, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait. That can be a very messy. Lotus are messy to like divide. You know, you have to dump out the pot and make sure yeah, you don't break, break the growing tips. And yeah, I divided them last year, and I have come to the conclusion that it is better not to divide them every year. I don't think they need it because they don't yeah. do well the year they're divided oh they get right stressed. there's always a little bit of time. transplant shock and, yeah uh, they need time they need time to fill the the pot so yeah but uh i i do have on order i've i've ordered some new plants for the year because i try new things every year so me too yeah, yeah me too so it's we sort of a disease new plants we're trying this year because it's always exciting um so my new water lily i'm trying is a variety called indiana which oh I yeah indiana. i've kept up indiana up? yeah oh yeah I've, I've kept indiana you might get a little disappointed that's a dwarf changeable yeah and you got to give it a lot of sun I didn't I get good. Fun. Yeah, I I didn't get good flowering from it. Um, it does take about a year to get established. Huh. Huh. Describe what a dwarf depends changeable on, means. What does that term mean? Changeable. These were water lilies developed by um, a guy in France called Marliac, who really started the hardy water lily movement. In fact, Monet saw his water lilies at the Paris Exposition back in the 1800s. And decided to fill his garden and make all those wonderful uh, paintings. So we owe the Monet paintings to this guy named Marliac. He started doing um, hybridizations with American and European and um, India uh, style uh, water lilies and created some changeable. So what they do is like the first day flower is like a light color, like it might be yellow, mm -hmm. second day peach, third day red. Yeah. Sweet. And probably the best one in the bunch is called Sioux, S I O U X. And that's the first one that blooms for me every spring. Really? And the last one to bloom every fall, S I O U X is what it's called. Maybe I'll um, try that one next year. So, yeah. so, how much sunlight are we talking? Well, you know, most, most of the hardies, you know, you can't, I mean, the one that are on my deck get about eight hours nine hours oh. there's some varieties that do well in just a few like one variety called 
uh, James uh, Bryden can bloom with just a few hours of uh, sunlight. One visa um, doesn't need very much. Yeah. I gave, uh, gotcha. I divided my one visa last year. You and divide it all the time. That thing just puts out oh shoot God, it's crazy. Insane. It is unbelievable. That, yeah. that that water lily won best water lily of so the crazy. year back in 2010. It was going for seven hundred dollars, and then That's they realized crazy. all it does is reproduce itself. It it's crazy. <laughs> so whoever I paid seven hundred for it. <laughs> I think last year I divided it and I gave it to like ten people. Wow. Oh yeah, so, and and that's the one I um I've given it to a lot of people in this community. And if you have a dark pink water lily for me, that's variety. But that one doesn't need a ton of sunlight. It just a, just a couple. Like th I think his pond is getting like three hours of direct sunlight. Probably. It yeah. It's just the one spot, one spot of the house where because I I live in a rural area. It's mostly shaded with with trees. I got one spot on the side of my house that uh actually gets direct sunlight for a few hours. Yeah. What so are I'm to, okay. I'm I'm trying to sh maybe share my screen here a second here. Yeah, okay. Um, because I because um Kelly, you did bring up you and I both um have a favorite water lily in Juan Visa. So I just wanted to show well, people. I wouldn't say it's was. my favorite, but I do like it. I do like yeah. it. Yeah. I'm gonna see if I could uh, get it here. Window. Oh, okay. Here we go. Can I get it there? Entire yeah. screen. Yeah. Let's just do entire screen, right? Yeah. You guys usually do, or you do it? You, yeah, that's what I do. I have two monitors, so I just share one of my monitors. All right. I'm, sharing I'm in one monitor because I'm in my fish room. This is one Vista. Can can uh, you guys see that? Yes. yes. So, so sometimes it's sectors yeah. like that. Sometimes yeah. it only rarely it's sectors like that. This, yeah. So you know, if you give it enough light, you'll probably get a couple during the season that will sector. Yes. Some of them, it's completely across. So you get a straight line right down the middle, mm -hmm. and it's yellow, and it's um, the red on the other side. This was the first leopard petaled water lily. And it's got red pads. It, it has a water lily in its background, in its uh, parentage, called Joey uh, Tomasic. Um, and it, what's neat about it is you always get a little different flower each and every time. So if you give it enough sun, you'll get all these different flowers showing up. But you've got to, as Kelly said, you've got to go in there and pull out the offshoots throughout the year because it will take over your tub and your pond because – it has a rhizome called an odorata. In other words, it keeps sending out rhizome shoots. But you can just take your finger, twist those out, and you have a plant to give uh, to a friend. Yeah. So I actually don't. I don't divide mine during the year, but it's in a bigger. It's in a bigger uh, pond. Yes. So it really, so, really likes it big. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't. I would just put it in a slightly bigger pond. It's not. Yeah. It's not for tiny tubs. Yeah, I mean, I keep mine in in a forty gallon. Right now, oh, I keep yeah. it in a a forty gallon stock tank. So, and it does well. It's just I always have to make sure that if it's sending out an offshoot, rip it out. You know? I'm not um, willing to do that kind of work. So mine is in no. a three hundred gallon pond. Yes, yeah. then it's perfectly it's like fine. Yeah. Right, yeah. it's yeah. perfectly no, fine. That's what I do it in. And uh, Rico, he is growing that variety in his pond, but it's one of those little in-ground 70-gallon ponds that's... That's not cool. bad. Yeah, it has pretty good... And he finally divided it this year. <laughs> yeah, it's He's really doing white clouds or something in there, the fish. I think he's doing white clouds. Mm -hmm. He, he did do white clouds. Yeah, he did do white clouds. I think this year he's doing Madaka, though. The white clouds bit the dust this year, mm -hmm. so... Yeah. That's a great tub fish. Yeah, it's a good tub fish. I would agree with that. My very first tub ever was back in grad school. I lived in Iowa. I had a tub on a porch, but it was very, very, very shaded. And, yeah. Um, I had white clouds in it, but a raccoon took them all. Oh, God, yeah. Raccoons are the number one. I mean, in my book, the chapter on um, pond pests, yeah. that probably has – that that's like the last one is the one people always uh go to um yeah. there's deterrents that work and then there's 
control that works, right? So um, yeah. that can really make you have a bad day, right? When yeah, you like the, come home the and the raccoons in my neighborhood, they only eat food. So yeah, the That's raccoons excellent. in my neighborhood are well fed on cat food, so they're not going to eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, who's feeding them? Around here is mostly uh, raccoons will eat them. Yeah. Who's feeding them cat food, Kelly? <laughs> Somebody who you wants don't. some cats to come inside, I guess. Oh my god! And then complain that the cats want to come inside. Oh well, you know that's actually. I'm I'm going to add that to the next edition of the book. I've got eight remedies for raccoons. I'm going to add Kelly Foreman's cat food method. Give right. them an alternative to eat, and they won't go in the they pond. Won't. Those that's raccoons brilliant. are fat and lazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. That's actually brilliant. You know, for deer management, they say that too. That in you know, my um, my uh, wife's a certified. Uh, Master Gardener, and 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 in and, and her old deer talk, she used to say, if you give the deer something else to eat yeah. that they like, they'll go for the candy and the M and M's before they go for you know, right? The you other know, stuff. So I think the cat food thing right is here. brilliant. Yeah, the cat food. They 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 stay away from all my ponds. I mean, they don't even go to my ponds to drink. I get really? uh, I get uh, cats coming to drink, but not not fish or not raccoons and hi corridorable aquariums welcome corridorable cali welcome and yes. scotty says do you like these plants dr ted is talking about come to the bcas annual oh. auction 422 right. see ted and that is plants. cali parker right is that cali parker who's corridorable i think oh, it is because she's talking good. about the bucks county auction no, no, Cat no, that's another person who's talking about this. Okay. Scotty. Yeah, Scott Scotty Smith. is pushing that, posting mm -hmm. that. Yes. Yeah, because Scotty and Callie are the president and vice president of the Bucks County Aquarium Society. That is my favorite auction. You know, I'm an old of I'm an old booster of live uh, fish clubs, and if you don't have one, start one. Send me a message, and I'll tell you how to do it. They're so wonderful in terms of expanding your knowledge and getting fish and plants, but the Bucks County – which meets in a lovely nature center in uh, Churchville, uh, right near the Delaware. They have my favorite auction. It's so much fun. The people are so nice, and it's just a blast. And there's also a nice nature garden there. So if, if, if you even want like a long drive, it's like an all-day auction. So you can show up anytime and leave anytime. Um, it's a nice drive, so... I would give my thumbs up to that one. I'm going there. I'll be there on Saturday. We're, my club is going to raid that. We have like a club raid. We're going to come and raid it. So, Well, that's confusing. We got two Cali Parkers. Oh. There's one in Pennsylvania. <laughs> and Corridorable yeah, Cali is a different Parker Cali Parker. Parker is a Corridorable Aquarian. She's in California. We have to have the meat. It's true. She has a doppelganger. So just, the Pennsylvania she, Callie is uh, her handle is on Callie YouTube Parker is, is super fish nerd is so if you yes, see her in chat nerd. yeah is Callie Parker the president of the Bucks County famous original Bucks County Aquarium Society all right well that sounds like fun we have a fish club in Indianapolis but they meet on I think Wednesdays, and I am yeah. not willing to drive three hours on a Wednesday night. You know, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, too that's hard. They're a very old, well-established club, and they they're a good one. But a lot of the clubs are now moving in the past twenty years to Friday through Sundays because I think that's just easier. Yeah, yeah, because you really get more people. You also get more women. You get more kids. And yeah. it, you, I think when you meet during the week sometimes, and it's also like, you know, you had uh, just said there, right? It's, it's a long commute. It is. And the, south, it's on the south side of Indianapolis. So I would have yeah. to drive through Indianapolis at rush hour, which is. Mm -hmm. Yep. But, so but, you know, sometimes on the other hand, it's easier to find space during the week yeah. than it is on the weekend. Right. So there's a back and forth to there's you know to yeah. each one but yeah they um i mean they get a lot of people at their meetings though that's a very thriving club so it's oh yeah 
Circles, Circle City Aquarium. Circle City. Yep. Yeah. Circle City is an old club. They've been around. They have a really long, proud uh, history. Yeah, they have um, a lot of great, long time. They have a lot of great people in it. Oh, yeah. Uh, good fish breeders. Mm -hmm. Their auctions have a lot of cool stuff at them, but Myrtle, what's your nearest club there. in uh, Maryland? Uh, the Potomac Valley Aquarium Society, PVA. Yes, uh, I spoke there last spring. That's a very nice group there. Did you go to uh, CatCon, Myrtle? The very last uh, no. CatCon? Uh, Cat, the one that happened recently. I, I did yeah. not go to that one. Um, I, I was I there. Left PVAS before that happened, and, uh, I just, okay. and, I, and I started college, so I was out of town during mm. the convention. So, if you're in Maryland, do you visit the amazing House of Tropicals? Yes, that's a oh, wonderful God. store. And, and that's I, I'm of how. for Nirvana. Yep. So many fish, like it's just walls and walls of and rows. I've and heard they set great it things about it. Yeah, it's Pearl, like, I'm have to visit you and see this place. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kelly and Steve, you have to go to House of Tropicals. It's wow. it, it's like a wholesaler open to the general public. Yeah. And just wow. the amount of stuff, and they have some rare stuff there too. Mm -hmm. It's just crazy. They bring stuff in too, if you ask them. Basically. Yeah, if you bring stuff in, it's really nuts. And it's right near the airport. So they take shipments in and stuff like that. So it's definitely worth if you're going up I-95 ever, that's probably a good one to stop by. The biggest fish store I've been to is uh, on the other side of the country, um, the wet spot. Oh, Myrtle must have mm. lost. The internet dropped. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, you've been to the wet spot. That's cute. Yeah, they have a separate yeah. facility for their uh, for their shipping, but I haven't been to that. Just the, the retail yeah. store, though, is, is pretty nice. He's a great guy who runs that. Um, I've known him for, for a lot of years. Um, that's Steve uh, Lundblad who runs uh, the wet spot and he's a big supporter of all the uh, clubs. Right. And um, he used to go to all the uh, conventions. I um, think he's a fellow of the American Cichlid Association too. We just got an order from them. My friend Sue Harkey, who's a wonderful speaker on uh, fish food. She spoke at the um, um, York Cichlid club of York club, and they did a big group order. So one of the nice things is when you have your own club, you can do a group order and they had a huge group order nice. of fish from the wet spot and they're in my tanks right here now, some of them. So yeah, that, that you're absolutely right, Steve. And that's a really awesome store and the owner is really great. Cool. We have the reef in Indianapolis, which is a very, very nice store and it mm -hmm. has a new pond section, but I have not been to it yet. So I don't know what it's like. Interesting. I usually, yeah, I usually, uh, my boyfriend works in Indianapolis, so if I get stuff from there, I call them, have them okay. set it aside, and then he brings it to me on Friday. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's nice. So, like, I get a lot of my plants from there. So he's earning boyfriend points. <laughs> yeah. So he awesome. Oh, he's earned many, many, many points. <laughs> he's pretty good. He's I mean, if good. you got someone to clean your FX6 every time it needs servicing, <laughs> that's a lot of points right. so. <laughs> oh god that's right i uh i don't clean the fx6 it's too heavy i mean who <laughs> do it <laughs> so ted are you familiar with the southeast louisiana aquarium society no i'm not i think southeast louisiana is that the one that is it clay who runs that who is the person mm. who ran that i think yes. i met him once yeah clay trackman i think trackman runs name. that right yes yes clay trackman used to come up to the NEC convention when we used to have them at the Northeast Council of Aquarium Societies. That was the big convention like in the Northeast. And he would always come up there. Um, nice guy. And I remember when he was trying to form that club. So that club is still going. Kind of. It's so right around COVID, it uh, just sort of died down. And it yeah, that's really what happened. Back up. Yeah, that's understandable. You mm -hmm. know, it's, it's hard. You know, a, a lot of the clubs um my local club here not mine but another club they lost half their members right people there's still covid hangover right people not even people just have gotten used to doing other things and not coming mm -hmm. out and not socializing and it's really important that we all really do that you know speaking yeah. as a former shrink it's the number one correlate to uh longevity i i agree with that I, network, yeah. right? 
Everyone so, tells me I got to go outside. This is why I got to set up a tub. I need an excuse. Yeah, once to go you get outside. that tub done, you'll finally. That's get right. for a couple of hours. Segway, I'm man. That's a perfect outside. segue. I'm no, I mean, I actually take it. And What's that I have told him Stephen has to finally start a tub because I want him to go outside every day. <laughs> and if he has a tub, he will want to go outside and look at his tub every day for a few minutes. Oh, I have a tub if we want to make Ted cry. No, no. <laughs> Let's do it. No. <laughs> now, I can so just to explain what this is, this was like an old bin that I had sitting outside. It's fine. Collecting rainwater. Ah. And, uh -huh. and I was like, you know what? I'm going to see exactly how easy I can really be with right. it. It's got and, kombucha in it from the from the Right. Day. I collected some mosquito fish from the ditch. That's right. And, Local fish for you. Right. So, and then I threw some floaters in there that go through ah. cycles of uh, growth. There you and go. Death. And I mean, I've literally, I have not fed this tub. I have not water changed this tub. No. And everything is doing just fine. That because they are Gambusia. And right. granted, it is it it is not a Martha Stewart style tub, but <laughs> if you enjoy it that's a polite way of saying it. It's more of a Steven tub. Now, you know, that's fine. You know, there's maybe a dead body at the bottom, but it's okay <laughs> because it's the like bacteria man. is breaking it down. Right. And you know, maybe a dead chipmunk shows up, so what? Listen, don't do not feel bad. I have a brine shrimp tub outside that I've been doing. Oh, wow. where the where the where it just has no fill. It's just a brine shrimp tub. I let the gunk form in there. I was outside the other day. They have reemerged. So they lay the hard winter eggs and they, they come back. The winter. They now, just come you back. Feed them? What do you nope. feed? You don't feed them. Wow. When oh, yeah. it's really because if you you know. Algae. Yeah, that's right. It, it it forms this salt water type algae forms. If I put a little brewer's yeast when I'm passing by, yeah. I'll do that, you know, a little yeast. But in the summer, it gets so hot, they don't even lay eggs almost, right? They're almost yeah. giving the birth life. Yeah, they, but they I'm lay these hard that. winter eggs. <laughs> no, it's, it's great. And I, I it looks terrible. Um, it looks like Stephen's tub, but maybe worse because it's got this funky <laughs> slime on it. But, so you know. If you've ever been to the Great Salt Lake and see what it smells like, that's pretty much not far yeah, from what right. you, you, you're saying. So, but what this tub has taught me, though, what what the, yeah, it, well, it's collapsing because it, they're not meant to hold water like that. But what this tub <laughs> has taught me, though, is that I don't have to really be fussy over a tub. So I can yeah. upgrade this, and I like I can. It's taught me what I can do. Just right at the red root floaters has kind of told me exactly like how much sun this is getting because you know the red root floaters they thrive on sun they get super deep purple and everything right right so right i can and I you're can keeping gambusia right and you know you're you're keeping a real bulletproof fish right and that right? was the so other that... thing is like can they just can they survive the winter of louisiana because most like it dries up and you don't see them anymore until next spring but you know this time i rescued them essentially from the ditch from the ditch gambusia are just you know we used to call them dambusia because <laughs> you know they are some have been found under the ice they're they mm. reintroduce they're so tough they're really the perfectly evolved freshwater fish in my opinion and people say you know, why do you say that? There's ugly little gray fish. They're very they're hard. So, they're very hard. They're so efficient. They don't have to be uh, colorful. The male doesn't have to court the female. He just mm. strikes her. Um, strikes um, her. Pretty much. She gives birth live. She only mm. needs to get pregnant once. She'll give birth every 30 days for seven months because she'll hold sperm in her. Um, they have a mouth that can get algae and also cover the surface so they have a multi-faceted mouth and you only need one female to find a ditch and form a whole new uh a whole new uh colony they really are like the perfectly evolved fish but they're nasty right like if if you kept them like when i collected those in key largo i brought them back with some uh uh self and mollies made the mistake this was 35 years ago right when i was a new hobbyist they shredded the molly's fins they were in the same tank even though they live fine in nature 
you know, they're, they're really nasty. They will eat the eggs of other fish quickly. So they're That's a little heard, small. Yeah. yeah. So all of those gambusi, you know, the brachyraphis live bearers are like that too. They can be real nasty. So, you know, not all live bearers are little peaceful platies and sore tails, right? There's no yeah. Yeah, I definitely yeah, heard that them. they are not to be mixed um, with other live bearers. Like, no. try to do like, let's see if not they can even, get a guppy strain or something out of them. But yeah. don't mix them with anything, frankly, because right. they can be just nippy, you know. But oh, I, yeah. I can tell you what, though, like there are no shortage. There's no shortage of mosquitoes down here in the swamps. So it's a uh, native fish for you, though. So right. fine. They're you know? hungry. So. Yeah. Steven can do a better looking tub. He doesn't have to. He can do well, a No, Steven I do tub. want to, but I wanted to do, I want to make sure that I could and I wouldn't, it wouldn't end up being like another thing to neglect because it requires too much maintenance and I get busy. But, and, you know. That's that's the whole beauty of tub right. ponds as um, Kelly has, has, yeah. has probably told you that they are low maintenance, right? Very low maintenance. Yeah. And yep. they can look pretty without a lot of maintenance, which is why I move most of my fish room and most of the tanks in my house outside. Very easy. Yeah. I, uh, I'd rather be outside. I mean, I have to I have to spend time setting them up in the spring. So Jim right. and I always do it over Memorial Day. So Boyfriend we, points again. Because hmm? <laughs> we take off Monday and Tuesday. And then, so we'll do it that long weekend. We'll get everything set up. We'll plant all the gardens, everything. Right. My yard mm -hmm. is very tiny. It's about 15 feet by 15 feet. So, you know, I don't Not have tiny. It's manageable. And that's better than <laughs> tiny. And she can fill up tiny. every square inch with tubs. Good as long as you've you got a place to sort of shimmy by to get to them. I, yeah. Love I, uh, it. I do grow love other it. things too. So, you I go, girl. Flowers I grow. But, um, so I set them up and then I have to take them down in October because it gets cold here. So right. I, the things I overwinter, I have to, I cover um, my permanent ponds with nets mm -hmm. to keep the leaves out of them because, you know, oh, I see. Our, the leaves fall from the trees here and they would get in the pond. And I put in, um, I don't usually put in the stock tank heaters. I put in air stones for um, the goldfish, right? Yeah, because the bubbling also helps to keep the uh, the um, the ice down. To mm -hmm. it. but if it's going to get below seventeen degrees, that's kind of the magic number for me that I have to yeah. drop in stock tank heat. Right on cue with that killer kitty. Yeah, yeah. tubs have to have to have an air supply. Depends no on the tub. Yeah, you know, it, it really depends on what we call the biomass of the fish. So when we're, we're, we're talking tubs, in my book, I, I don't recommend goldfish. I'm, if you have a big stock tank, yes, but those are very heavy-bodied fish, yeah. and they're used to colder water, right? So if they're used to colder water, they're used to higher oxygen content, yeah. right? Because the colder the water, the higher the oxygen. But for the small aquarium fishes we keep, even the dwarf cichlids, um, if you get the right dimension of tub, you don't need an air stone. I think the mistake people make are really three things, right? And um, can I tell you what those uh, three things are? Yes. Please do. Is that fine? So I think the first thing that they do is the location, right? It's all about the location, the microclimates. This goes to, this is true even if you don't have a backyard. If you want to put up a little mini tub in your apartment, you're going to do it in southern exposure or northern exposure window. Well, in your yard, you have microclimates. You could put things just a few feet away and the sun could hit a tree and that tub gets shaded and the mm. other tub does not. And they could be radically different in terms of the heat in that tub and the type of, of fish you keep. So it takes time to learn your location, what your temperature will be over time and how those tubs uh, function. After that, it's a question more of size. Can I show you something? Sure. <laughs> Let me, and let me um, just, I, I do worry about that, up, yeah. having the tub in direct sun, because, I mean, our winters are, are fine, but our summers can get really, really nasty. So like, I have found that, so, I mean, it does get really hot here. We have hot spells in, in Indiana. Um, even my smaller tubs, and mine are baking in direct sun all yeah. day. They have no yeah. shape ever. Um, exactly. I do use... I do use water circulation in mine, so I use either... Um, 
battery or I either use a plug in yeah. little fountain or I use a solar powdered bubbler and then a hundred percent floating plant coverage. Yeah. And then I use no mechanical stuff. I've been doing this 25 years, 30. Yeah. I use, I use nothing. Um, it, again, to, to what uh, Kelly said, it depends upon the fish you keep. Yeah. Let me just show and you, I, show and you and here. I, like my Madaka, though, I just, I just really like the look of fountains, so I always have them in every tub. I think they look nice. Oh and they yeah, it was the, right. They do keep the water a little cooler to have that circulation. So the the, the only I thing I don't like about fountains is that in a small tub like you know this is a this is a thirty four gallon of uh, patio pond, right? Yeah. This is probably my favorite general tub because it has shelves, but if if you look at the dimension of this tub. This is in full sun on my deck, right? This is getting nine hours. This can go over 90 degrees all day. But if I keep small fishes, they're fine. The reason is, and this is the key point, the diameter is wider than the depth. The thing I learned over the years is if your diameter is wider than your depth, it solves a lot of problems. You get enough gas exchange that the tub really works well. So um, when you get like these rope handle tubs, sometimes they might not work as well because, and I know a lot of people use them. I think I got a picture of one. And sometimes that they don't work as well because they're deeper than they are wide. So when you have a shallow tub like that, that's good for a more shady area, right? Where it could, it could cool off. But I used to have two species of fish spawn in this. I had um, uh, Danio nigrofasciatum and I had sparkling garamis spawning in the same tub in oh. the middle of the summer and their fry were fine. The reason I don't use a fountain and I'm feel just like you do fountains are awesome is that I get more evaporation. Yeah, so when I'm true. keeping, but you see, I'm keeping 30 tubs. So yeah, I don't, I just don't have the time to keep adding water. And when I add water from the tap, that's going to be harder. So I'm making the tub harder. Now I collect rainwater, but not enough to refill if I have that much evaporation. Also in a tub situation, the water lilies don't like a lot of spray, right? Yeah. Um, they do better without that. So it depends upon the size of your tub and how small and how much evaporation that you want to yeah. like deal with. I prefer, I guess I, I prefer bigger tubs for me. I think Always, also, yeah. I know. See, Jimmy P says 115 in the summer makes a pond a challenge. But one of these years, I would get a stock tank, Jimmy, because those they're such a large volume of water that they don't get so hot. And if you put just a little pump in it for a little circulation, get a ton of floating plant cover or water, yeah. really, it's fine. They don't get too yeah. hot. Yeah, it is. Because you also, yeah, and you know, Kelly brings up a good point because when you have a stock tank, right, those are generally yeah. about 30 inches deep. You get a natural uh, thermocline. Right. If you put your hand in the water, you'll you'll see it gets cooler. So when a really hot day, your fish will retreat down uh, to yeah. that bottom. So in my stock tanks, I will use put put my larger larger fish, my larger water lilies. And, you know, you can get those stock tanks much cheaper on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. Yeah. People often are giving them away. So to your point, Kelly, yeah, they're really good. The only problem with the stock tanks is that if you're really into a variety of marginal plants that like the water shallow, they're not, they they're not as easy to work with. For that. Mm -hmm. I found that yeah. – so what I do is um, I make little shelves – with mm -hmm. yeah. overturned any kind of basket okay. or bin. you know you can get kind of creative with it Milk crates is, is some is, crates is some of the things that well. i use i've also used plastic hanging baskets that are yeah planters. you can do that you can hang them from the inside that works well um but i i really like the look of the metal stock tanks i seal them with flex seal i spray them on the right. inside do you need to do yeah. that for, yes. for the metal yeah, metal ones, yes. Yeah, because yeah. the galvanized yeah, steel do. is not good for fish. Okay. So, but I used Flex Seal. I sprayed it, um, and I hundreds of Madaka bread, so they're probably fine. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, we had a week where it was over a hundred degrees every day for the week, 
and the fish were still breeding through that. So yeah, I, yeah that is my worry that. is the heat. Um, yeah, well, you know, I, I guess where you are down in Louisiana, you know, a lot of my friends down south, they use shade cloth, right? Mm -hmm. If they're breeding fish outside, they will use some mm -hmm. shade cloth. You could also just, again, find that location. If you can get a break in the midday sun through, through, through that sun arcing over a roof line or through a tree, it makes a tremendous difference, right? It's, I mean, so, it's mostly breaks in the sun. There is just that one it's a it's on the south side of the house and we're talking like three hours of sunlight and the rest is just it's like behind trees i think you would do fine i think water lilies would still bloom depending on the variety and i can send you ones that i know will bloom because they bloomed in my friend's pond and his pond only gets about three hours of direct sunlight a day so here's a puzzle so, to solve um so bex living lives in colorado high elevation uh, lots of evaporation very dry water yeah, very, yeah. yeah so yeah that's, so, that's why she doesn't do tubs yeah, yeah. Well, well you know i mean there's different ways to deal with evaporation if you're in a desert area it's going to be hard to deal with that period mm -hmm. but you know i think that's where water lilies and floating plants come in handy they do keep the evaporation down they do cool the tub somewhat but if you're in a desert area then that's a you know that that's a whole different ball game there right because right. just the actual you have no humidity right so the humidity is so dry is, there you know yeah. so that's 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 a different ball game but it, you might want to consider uh, polycarbonate uh, greenhouse siding panels just on top of the tub just have nothing growing out of the tub just keep the polycarbonate siding on top of the tub. yeah I, there, there there are people who keep their tubs in a northern exposure sunroom you know or some type of uh greenhouse that would be on the northern side again you know location right It'll, you, you you have to adjust how you do it right. based upon your geography and when but you live in an apartment you don't really have yeah she, she's an apartment dweller too so then yeah, that's really good is, yeah, yeah. It's a bit difficult <laughs> well you know i mean i actually know i mean you you have these bowl lotuses now right that you yeah. grow in a rice bowl you, and you can have more of them coming two more so yeah they're great you know you, you you could have a mini pond by your window um you know um that's you know maybe you give it some water every day but there's people who 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 do that and if you get some of the small perforated pots some of the ones used for growing um other types of plants that are recreational um, you could, you know, you, you could have a lot of good vegetative filters in that, in that pond with some fish. It could be a small planter. Like Kelly said, you treat it with some liquid rubber. Um, so it's yeah. non, I used flex you know, seal. I know you yeah. recommend, uh, liquid rubber. I used flex no, seal because yeah. I could find it and it worked. No, flex seal, no, flex seal works. The, the only problem with flex seal is for a while they were not putting it with safe for ponds on their uh, spray bottle. They were, I think they were only, so you have to just look at the label. I, so I'm actually happy to hear now that flex seal is safe for ponds. Yeah. So going I mean, back and forth. Because I bred hundreds of Madaka in this pond. Yeah. So I, I think it's, I I've used comfortable with flex seal it. over uh, over concrete before for yeah. aquarium decor because but yeah. I, I didn't use the spray because like Ted said the spray had always I had always read don't use that for uh, for aquariums or ponds yeah. use the uh, well, the can it, stuff was different. Yeah, I, you know just I you, you just have to look on the can to see if it's safe for like ponds right mm -hmm. if it doesn't say safe now some fish are really tough they can deal with a lot of stuff but. I was breeding rainbow fish outside and I was moving, I was moving the water hyacinth from my stock tanks into these garden planters, these plastic planters. I got at Lowe's they were, they were really nice. I still have them and I would get the fry. And then after a month, they, they would all be dead. I'm like, okay, okay. rainbow fish fry stay, stay, stay very, very tiny. They need a lot of microscopic mm -hmm. food. Maybe that they're um, depleting what's in the tub. Next round came in, you know, the eggs hatch in about uh, 10 days, same thing. Then I've remembered that planter I got never said it was safe for fish. Oh. And I flipped it over. There was no number five underneath. There was no food grade symbol on it. 
Mm. It was it was not safe. Yeah. So that, that, that's when I had to coat it. So I, I have to uh, coat that. So it's much better when you get a nice planter or something that looks nice. Flip it over, see what it's made of mm -hmm. before you use it. So, what, so yeah. what was it leaching into the water? Well, it was leaching a it was leaching a non it was leaching whatever was the additive in that mm. uh, plastic resin was not safe you know it didn't have a food grade safety label so yeah. in my book there's this actual chart that shows what numbers to look at and what symbols like if you go to a uh, tractor supply you might find a tub if you flip it over it has a symbol of a spoon and a fork that means that it's food grade that means that if, if you ever see that symbol on plastic you can just eat out of that basically so that's going to be safe for like fish the reason why this is important is because when you set up a tub, you're not just setting up a tub for plants and fish. You're setting up an ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You're setting up a place for phytoplankton, microscopic mm -hmm. organisms, algaes that form the entire food chain. So you want it safe for them as well because that's going to keep your maintenance down. That's going to keep your ecosystem healthy. It's going to keep your water clean. So even if you're just not keeping fish, hey, I just want to keep plants, and like snails, you still should try to use a safe plastic. The ones that are designed for ponds are probably the safest. And McCourt at Lowe's sells a 20 gallon round tub, which is absolutely ideal. It's 26 inches wide, it's 20 gallons. It's yeah. so wide for, and it's uh, 15 inches deep. It could house a nice size water lily, a small one, but it has the gas exchange. You know it's safe, you'll have it forever. So you're going to spend, you know, $30 on it versus yeah. $7 for a rope handle, but it's worth it. You know? I did one of those last year. So, and it, it did work well. I was able to grow um, a water lily in it, Helvola, which is a very, very tiny, tiny dwarf water lily. It's well in the shade too. Yeah. And um, mine is baking in the sun though. And I did a lotus spring dance or spring cherry, which blooms like crazy. Crazy, yeah. And then I did a marginal. I did um, you know, it's a ranunculus. I can't remember which ranunculus. You did a ranunculus because that's a, a garden plant, right? There are some aquatic uh, ranunculus. Oh, there. really? Oh, wow. Yeah. Which ranunculus did I do, Myrtle? I don't remember. <laughs> I just bought a uh, tissue culture. Did, uh, did it have yellow flowers on it, Kelly? Yes, it had tiny yellow flowers. Inundatus is the one you had. River yes, buttercup. Yes, Inundatus. Thank you. That's yeah. the one that I just bought a tissue culture of from and uh, Grant like, and Shelby yesterday. And it's, uh, it's overwintered. I threw it in the bottom of the pond, and it's there's leaves underneath it that are growing. I don't know that I'll grow it again. I don't find it that attractive, actually. I it's pretty yeah. boring uh, when it I doesn't have really, the flowers. The flowers really, are really know. boring. It does bloom constantly, but eh, there's other stuff to grow. So, so Killer Kitty is I asking I about... Picture, I think I have a picture of Helvola because you keep mentioning it, and it's a really good water lily. It is a perfect. Really, it is so tiny. It's the and smallest cute. of the hardies, yeah. So tiny and cute. Yeah, I, um, I grew it last year, and I really loved it. So this is Helvoli here again in a tiny tub, like uh, Kelly said. Mm -hmm. This is um, it's got little tiny flowers. This is an old Marliac. Here's the neat thing about Helvola that many people don't know. You remember I had mentioned that guy Marliac in France developed all these all these um, water lilies. Well, he did a weird thing when he developed all these different kinds. He made them sterile. The only way they reproduce is by rhizomes. They don't go to seed, which it means, what, well, it also means when you keep Helvola or Chromatella, you're not just keeping the water lily that Monet painted, you're keeping the exact, the water lily Monet painted because mm -hmm. they're all offshoots of that water lily, right? Mm -hmm. They're not from seed. So you're keeping the Monet's water lily. So that's kind of neat, right? That you can keep yeah. a piece of art history in your tub. So this is like, again, a 15 gallon tub. You can see the black um, liquid rubber around the side here. And this is a uh, creeping Jenny, golden creeping Jenny. I know it's not from the U S but it's a nice spiller plant. 
I grow again, a lot of that plant. That's an easy, easy plant. Yeah, it, it can be invasive, but I like it because it yeah. adds color and it adds spiller. And again, this is another 35 gallon uh, patio pond. I live in a place called the Rockaway Valley for a reason. I have a lot of rocks. So this is not sunken. This is just, I just put rocks around the tub. Um, and I don't, this is, this is a shade tub. This is a tub that gets shade. So I have uh, pickerel rush, which does grow in the shade. There's a variety that does. Creeping Jenny grows in the shade. Chameleon plant and a little water hyacinth. And, you know, this is where I put fish that like it a little cooler. Some of my good deeds go out here, endlers. So just some examples. But you keep mentioning this wonderful little water lily helvola. And, um, plant. you know, Kelly, I don't know if you found this, but this blooms for me in just three hours of light. I, I don't know if you found that it's. My, I, mean, I haven't it. tried it because my yard. So my yard, when I first set up my pond, it was um, deep shade all day because it was under. Wow. It was under a tree. Well, that tree yeah. is gone now. And now I have baking sun all day. Oh, great. Wow. So, I mean, and it's really just transformed my pond keeping because when I first started, I couldn't even get one vita to bloom. I had such right. deep shade. Yeah. And now anything blooms. Those pesky trees in the way. I know. So, but the, <laughs> Those my, evil trees, we should just chop them down. Just chop them down. <laughs> so, yeah, I, uh, I don't have a problem with that. I have full sun on all my ponds, which is really nice. Yeah. And, and all Did the you rest see of uh, too. Killer Kitty's question about substrate? Yeah, so let's talk about what you plant them in because I do the same thing that you do, Ted. I learned how to do it from you. I learned it by watching you. You plant them in pea gravel and baskets? No, for water lilies, no. Oh, for water, so so I, I, I think to ask her, her question, there's, there's two things. It, it depends on what you're planting, right? So if you think of your tub as the plants are going to be your main filter, you're going to use vegetative filtration like in nature, as well as by setting your tub up early, like now, the film of bacteria and algaes and archibacteria and phytoplankton are going to be the secondary filtration source. So for filtration plants, iris, cattail, pickerel, monkey flower, hardy canna, those things that have big root systems, I plant those in baskets, pond baskets, in pea gravel. And I let their roots come out, and they filter the water. They draw their nutrients from the water column. When you have fish and you feed them, especially if you feed them a dry food, your plant should do well. You're basically trying to starve them, and they will suck those nutrients out so you don't have an algae problem. For the water lilies and lotus, that's going to, if you really want to enjoy them, that's going to be a solid pot. And that's where the substrate issue comes in, Kelly, right? Yeah. Where where you have to talk about a clay soil that's what and I fertilizer because they're pigs, especially the lotus that you keep, right? They're I like fertilize them every other week. Yes. They're, 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 they're pigs. Fingers. And lotuses, so, I really fertilize heavy and I can keep them blooming uh, all lotus, day. man. Holy cow. You have a lot more patience than I do, Kelly. Why can you use like a pond tab or something for that? I do. I use pond tabs. And the thing is, my yard is only 15 foot by 15 foot. You know, it doesn't take any time to do it. I don't have many tubs. I don't, I don't have much yard. So, you know, I hand water all of my, my, uh, wow. Bowls every day. It's, it's, you know, I, I have a tiny yard. It doesn't take mm -hmm. any time. So, uh, no, I fertilize everything every other week to keep it going. And, um, yeah, I, uh, I, for, I plant, so I do my cannas. I actually plant my cannas like I do my water lilies and lilies. Right. Because, because you want, want the flowers. Right. Yeah, I want the flowers. So I, I do them like that. And I fertilize them too, because I want them to look good. Right. Um, yep. I have a box, box. So my big pond is, it's a, double decker so the bottom deck is a box that's lined with pot with pond fabric and it has right. a pump that brings water up into a box that's filled with pea gravel and so you're using pump. mechanical filtration yes so the pea gravel right. is the filter and i plant things in 
the bog box and the bog uh, box okay. is like another it's another right. opportunity to garden because i grow tons right. of things in there and that's where i plant like my big um elephant ears so my aloe right. the taros right yeah, yeah and i'll do i'll do flowers i right. plant, i do different things in it every year and that's that grows really really right. well so that so the method that i use is basically completely non no mechanics, no no erasure. Yeah. Simply so my because smaller tubs I have a large collection. Is, yeah, my smaller tubs I do right. this, but for my bigger one, this is the pond I started with. This is um, this was built for me by my friend um, oh, seven years ago. He built it. Um, he came up here and built a wooden box for me, and we set it up together. And he is right. an in, he's an in ground ponder, so he built me a pond that is similar to how he ponds, and then I can keep it up year round. And my mm. my four goldfish live there. And so the thing that you're seeing here right now, so this is this is this is an example of vegetative uh, filtration. These are kind of the big three, and these flower for me in gravel. <laughs> yeah, frankly. and and they flower in um, my the iris, too. You have cattail and flowering uh, pickerel rush. The great thing about pickerel is that it's one of the few perennial plants. It'll flower for you for me from June through October. Yeah, most pond too. plants don't do that. But you'll see this these root masses. These are planted just in gravel and uh, perforated uh, pond boxes. That root mass is what's filtering all of my thirty tubs from. Um, from the ones from 125 gallons down to uh, 15 gallons. Um, so that's that's for the filtration. But to Kelly's point, if you want to keep water lilies and lotus, you need really a solid pot because those are really big root feeders. And you only have one season, so you might as well enjoy the flowers when you can, right? So don't forget the fertilizing. So you enjoy all those wonderful water lilies and lotus. Yeah, and I am. Um... I mean, my water lilies and lotuses, they, once they start blooming, they don't stop until frost. Right. They go and go and go, especially the lotus variety that I've had best luck with was one called spring cherry. And I did that last year. It grows in a small pot about that big around at the bottom of a tiny pond. Well, not the bottom. It has to be elevated a little bit because lotuses are marginals. I mean, I would have 20 flowers at once, and it just went all season long. That one was really successful for a variety. So um, other lotuses are fussier. I think lotuses are harder than water lilies, personally. Oh, they are. I've, I, 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 I only keep one. I used to keep more um, because they are a little more I'm fussy. Super, I'm super into them. Um, this year... So I had three last year. I'm adding two more micro lotuses this year. We'll see how they do. But the spring cherry, that variety is so robust. I'm not going to divide it this year, but I'm going to divide it next year. And I'll send you one next year. When no, I please don't. Oh, we don't <laughs> want it. <No. laughs> I love it. It's yeah. the best. It's we the have best. so many lotus at the Bucks County auction oh, coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah, because... My friend, he's the uh, a horticulturist at uh, mm, Rutgers, oh, uh, Pete Nietzsche. And Pete Nietzsche grows a lot of lotus. And we just had our club meeting Friday. He had so many varieties, Choo Choo and the larger ones, Pink Maiden, and wow. all these other ones that, that he gets. So there's going to be a lot of lotus at Bucks County. But I'm Kelly, I, I will not be bidding on them, Kelly. Kelly, I will not be bidding on them. <laughs> I'm in a lotus wasteland here. I mean, it's really hot. It's impossible. If you want me to bid on one, I will, and I'll send it to you. I so know. I ordered two more. I got them from uh, Ten Mile Creek. Ten Mile Creek is great. Yeah, That's they where are. I got from. And Ten I got two more Creek, micro I highly lotuses. recommend. Yeah, I got two more micro lotuses because I love them. So that, and I also got a Lobelia cardinalis because I've always wanted to grow it, but I can never find it in the nurseries. I don't know why. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting plant. It, it really, you know, this is where having, in my opinion, um, one of the more, a non-stock tank comes in handy because there's a lot of plants in my collection. I've got about 120 plants that are just pond plants in my collection. Mm -hmm. Some of them really just like their feet wet. 
right? Yeah. They really like muddy, shallow waters. And Lobelia carnalis, I think, is one of those. But those will um, grow in my bog, in my bog. Field. Yes, so they'll grow in your bog, well yeah. That. And the bog is like its own part of gardening for me because I grow so many things in there, and it it's a lot of fun to do it. So um, that will go in my bog. But uh, I don't quick, know I why to say, I can't uh, find that thank one you to... locally. I should be able to. It's native here. So. Real quick, let me say thank you to Killer Kitty for the super sticker. Thank you, Killer thank Kitty. You, and Kitty. Killer Kitty had a question, I thought, earlier. Just about substrate. Yeah. Um, well, Rebecca, freshwater uh, ichthyology, she asked about growing lotuses. Now, a lot of people mix up lotuses and water lilies. Because the thing that we call, which I'm trying to get rid of it, but it's so invasive, red tiger lotus in an aquarium is actually a nymphaea. Yeah. It's a water right. lotus. Right. Um, that is different than a lotus. A lotus is an immersed plant. It grows up and out of the water. It has stems and leaves that grow out of the water. It has flowers that flower above the water. Whereas a water lily makes the pads, the lily pads that you know. And they have the, the flowers that are floating on top of the water. So the thing that's in our aquariums is actually a water lily. It's a nymphaea. And I think that nymphaeas are way easier than lotus. Yes, definitely. To grow a lotus, so I'm not great at them. I'm still learning. You have to be very delicate with the tuber, not break off the eyes because the... Growing tips. Yeah, the growth tips. So when you get them you get a piece of tuber that's kind of long and skinny and it'll have little growth tips or little eyes sticking up and you mm -hmm. want to gently place them on the surface of the pond mix which i use um either plain kitty litter and dirt or i use sand mm -hmm. and dirt like three have you tried one. safety zorb i haven't yet but i might yeah, try that it's this great year. it's great but is that your favorite now yeah. In fact, yeah, I really like Safety Zorb. It's that uh, it's you know you can get it at any uh, tractor supply. I might try that. I might try yeah. that this year. I've used um, Soil Master Select, which is like a yeah field conditioner. I've used right. That similar stuff, right? It's yeah, basically uh, calcite clay. Yeah, um, I might try the Safety Zorb this yeah. year because it's also cheap. The safety but, um, zorb is like for absorbing oil, right? That's what it's. Originally. Yeah, it's basically. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. But it's it's really cheap. You get a giant bag for nine dollars. I use it in my uh, planted aquariums here. I use that as like I've a lower level. I've heard of other people using it because oh, it has yeah. a good. Uh, yeah, Karen Randall uses it too. So. Yeah, but uh, you want to make sure not to break those off, and you put it on the edge of the pot because what it does, you want to put it in a round pot because it runs around the edges. And if you put it in a square pot, it'll get kind of caught in the corners. So you don't want to do that. And uh, I very gently cover it with sand or yeah. gravel. You don't yeah, that's what I do. You have to weight it down or it'll float up. It'll float up. Yeah. And then so okay. no Do you find that when... In... What? Kelly, do you find that um, when you do the lotus, I place mine on the top. Hold it down with a stone. Do you find, and then I find that the roots pull it into the substrate eventually. Yeah. Do you do. find that too? I do find that. I do. I do put like a little bit of gravel to weight it down, just so. Okay. But yeah, they do pull their way into it eventually. How shallow do you? How shallow water do you grow your lotus? That's always a big debate about. Pretty people. shallow. Uh -huh. Um. Uh, it depends on the variety, the bigger ones. So I have a really big one called Princess Ellen of 10 Mile Creek that I grow in a pot that's like that big around. Oh, God. And that one I will go probably like 12 inches deep. But for the smaller ones, oh, I don't know, three, four inches deep, I want them pretty of short. Water. Yeah, yeah, of water. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So first they will put out these floating coin leaves and you don't want to fertilize during this, this, uh, beginning growth period. You wait the coin leaves, it'll five, six of them, it'll throw it. And then it will start putting out an aerial leaf, which will grow above the surface. That's when you fertilize. And then I put in five root tabs. And then every other week I put in like one for tinier lotuses. Obviously, yeah. I would put in less of them, but um, 
if you fertilize them from the get-go, apparently they won't bloom. So you have to wait until the aerial leaf stage. Yeah, they are very, you definitely have to be patient and yeah, they're, they're labor fast. intensive. And, uh, but uh, there's, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad you mentioned 10 Mile Creek. They're really a they're good really outfit. Good. That's, where, and, oh, um, that's where like, they have hybridized so many varieties. So like I have one called them um, and they sell it elsewhere too. It's called Princess Ellen of 10 Mile Creek. Well, that's because 10 miles, yeah. that, that strain. Yeah. My club is doing a uh, lotus grow out. So we actually oh, get cool. lotus seeds from 10 mile Creek. Oh, and then, e awesome. and then everyone gets a bunch and we, and then we all curse each other when we try to score the seeds because right. you have to take they a have to and then soak them in water. I've seen, I've watched videos on how to do that, but I've never done it. I've always just bought the tubers. Right. So yeah. But you know, to, to your to your caller there who just um I call him a caller. Can you guys see this? Yes. So so I mean this is this is from the book. So to, so the person who like wrote in. So you know Kelly went through I think a really excellent procedure on how to grow lotus. But if you're growing any plant that you want to flower well, um, a solid pot is more the way to go. It's not going to be a vegetative filter. It's going to become an ornamental, but a very good soil to use. Many of you have it is to dig down in your backyard about 12 inches till you reach what's called that clay layer. And you can use that soil. And I, that's generally what I use. And I mix it with either a kitty litter, like uh, Kelly said, but make sure it's kitty litter with no fragrances, no additives. Or get safety orb, which is also just pure clay. You mix that in. I put a little of here, what you're seeing here, that's called land and fertilizer. That's what they use at Longwood Gardens and a lot of botanic gardens around the world. It's developed by the water lily master who sadly passed away, Ken Landon. Oh, you put yeah. about two ounces of in there, and then you add another layer of soil. You put in your water lily, and then you add some more soil. But what you do is you put water into the pot before you put it in the water. Because what you want to do, you want to get rid of the air bubbles. You don't want this popping out. So unlike a lotus where you lay on top of the surface, you want to put this up to what we call the crown of the plant right there. You want to bury it from this point down. You add some water until it doesn't pool anymore, a little sand like Kelly does uh, with the lotus. So I, I add a little gravel pea or aquarium on top to keep the sand and the soil in the pot, add some more water and slowly lower it into the tub. And if you do that, you get a nice healthy substrate. It won't really pop out. And if you do this early in the season, another tip that I do, let me just stop sharing, is I will take an upside down perforated pot and I will um, um, raise that water lily up more towards the surface. The reason is because the water is warmer, right? Yeah. And then as, as the spring and summer get warmer, you can put it at the bottom of your tub. With tropical lilies, which are a whole nother ball game, that's really essential because they will go dormant and then your summer will be over. The hardy water lilies will come back for you year after year. So yeah. to the, to the, chat boxes question um that's how i do it there's a zillion different ways people pot up their water lilies there's more recipes than that than baking cookies so um you just want to get a soil do just make basic rule of thumb do not use a garden soil the soil your plants like is too rich and too soft for water plants water plants like clay soils mm -hmm. um so that's really the key there right uh, that you want to focus on and to Kelly's point, fertilizer tablets, right? When it gets really hot in the summer, Kelly and I, we're fertilizing every other week, every Kelly, right? Every other week, yeah. And I fertilize like crazy, and that's because I want them to bloom and bloom and bloom, and they do. Yeah. You want to enjoy them. And, you know, they sell water lilies. I would say also one thing I tell people don't do, use fertilizer designed for aquatic life or aquatics. Don't use regular terrestrial yeah. fertilizer. No, awesome. It hasn't yeah. been tested to be safe for fish. I know. I know we people use of, it. But yeah. We get a lot of questions here about fertilizer. To use. Can I use Job fertilizer spikes? Can use pond use tabs or thrive. I yeah. never do. Um, I yeah. use pond tabs. 
in my aquarium, I use fertilizers designed for an aquarium because right. I just, I'm not going to risk my fish. Yeah, exactly. I mean, people have gotten away with Osmocote, but you really have to know what you're doing. And you know, like, very Stephen, that's very true. Yeah, no, Stephen brings up a point people have used, and I've used it too. I used I use Osmocote too, instead of Landon's for that granulated. And I but, have too, but you it's know, deep for the bottom of the pot. pot. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. deep in a pot. During Landon the season, was better though. I will tell you that. Yeah, deep. You know, during the season though, you're just jamming it in with a finger, so it's not that. You don't use a dibble. You gotta get a dibble. I just. You gotta get a dibber. A dibber. Okay, now that you are an official tub meister, I have to send you a dibber for Christmas. Okay. That I gotta is Google what a dibber is. I've been just sticking it in. I want everyone on the line to go to Google Images and type in garden dibber. It's an old oh, English. Is that one tool. of the fertilizer inject injector? Yeah, things? the little. No, no, this is an old oh. garden tool. This is this is a spike that's on a handle that goes right into the pot. You lift it out. The water, the um, fertilizer tab goes in, and then you uh, cover it up. That's the other important thing. You've got to cover up that cover fertilizer tab yeah. and press down. You don't want that leaching. But a dibber or a really wide screwdriver, I went to a dibber. My life got easier. But again, I've got thirty yeah. tubs. I've got you know. But I I'm have, good. have. You're getting a dibber, Kelly. All right, I'll get the dibber. There <laughs> is. You are going to get an. I'm going to get you an engraved dibber. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'll use it. If your boyfriend yeah. is looking for a gift, what do you give the gift for the woman who has everything? You get her a garden <laughs> dibber. I mean, I would hope you would uh, get nice something more than that. With but... an engraving on it. <laughs> a nice garden dibber that says, I love you always. You know, something wow. like that. <laughs> <laughs> they make your life easy. But again, I, uh, it, yeah, I don't know, have that many plants. Because so your fingernails must look terrible. Putting your finger in there all day. They, your fingers must look like like you you've know, gotten tired. I, uh, like, I I have to I trim my fingernails like three times a week. This is a fun Kelly fact. Your fingers I, must look like that that horror movie, The Ring, when she when she comes out of the well and her fingers are all gone. My yeah. God, woman, what are you doing? I don't have thirty tubs. It's not that bad. Okay. <laughs> So, but yes, I do fertilize very regularly because I want to keep them blooming. I also fertilize my annuals that are just growing in my pots really regularly too, because I want yeah. to keep them looking good. When you only have a 15 foot by 15 foot yard, you got to make it look good. Have yeah. you heard about Kelly, the new, um, have you, I, I spoke to the owner of, of Pond Tabs recently. He's 95. He's still running the wow. company. Sharp as a whip. I couldn't That's even keep up great. with this. I use, I use Pond Tabs. They're Have great. you heard of Pond Tabs Junior that just came out? I saw out. you posted that they make oh, new ones now. That's great. Yeah, they, are. Was. they are one fifth the size of wow. regular Pond Tabs. So I'm going to start yeah. using them in the aquarium because they're a lot cheaper than root tabs. They're one fifth the size. Wow, because and it's, some root tabs are expensive. They are real expensive. But so I love them because they don't fall apart. Pond tabs exactly. Don't fall apart, they That's do. A so tip because these like, are little the tiny guys. Root tabs. Yeah. I don't like them. Mm. Yeah, you know that's the thing oh, with fertilizer, right? If if they if they if if they break up, you're like, oh, I gotta get another one now, or then it's in your water column, and I hear you. That can be yeah. a yeah. That's I will try. I'll get some of the pond tabs for my. But you're right. Root period. tabs are really, really great that way. They actually yeah. you can put them in there and they stay solid. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're great. And uh, but otherwise, I don't really do any maintenance for my ponds during the season. I don't even feed them because. I have so many mosquitoes in this neighborhood because I live by three mm -hmm. rivers. Yeah. And yeah. It's the yard is so thick with mosquitoes that. They well, you know, actually, you're actually doing, them. you're actually doing a good thing for your right. neighborhood because a lot of people always complain. You might have heard it too. 
oh my god how do you keep the uh, mosquitoes away and i and i the always fish, tell people fish. you know the fish and the yeah, prawns, they're eating the fish, yeah they're eating all of it and they need to do their job and they do i mean i bred hundreds of madaka last year so they were eating something mm. and but, i really but, but, don't but, but, want hundreds but, of goldfish no but i guess <laughs> and I more guess, goldfish I guess my whole point is, is that you're actually helping your neighborhood control mosquitoes because yeah. a female mosquito has so many egg rafts to lay each night. If you didn't have, and I didn't have my tubs, she's going to lay them in the gutters all around the neighborhood oh, yeah. and they're yeah. going to hatch and bite people. But if she yeah. lays them in our tubs, they're not going to see the light of day. So we're actually controlling mosquitoes by having a tub with fish. I use a yeah. little piece of mosquito dunk too. I do too because I you am, don't have to, but I do use mosquito dunks because I am so sensitive to mosquito bites. Yeah, that I, me too. I have to do what me I too. Can, um, me too. Because it gets to the point where I can't even enjoy my ponds. Right. And in the evening, because the mosquitoes are so thick here, yeah. so that's that's yeah. a little problem for me. But you know, the actual good thing is those little mosquito dunks, which go for a dollar each. For a small tub, you only need a quarter of one, or a large tub, a half of one, once a month. So it's really easy, right? It's it's yeah. an easy solution. Yeah, and for, for people who don't know what they are, they're a natural remedy. They're the bacteria Bacillus thuringiensis, which mm -hmm. interferes with the life cycle of the mosquito. It yeah. prevents the larva from um, going through uh, morphogenesis into the adult. So it's a natural remedy. Yeah. People even use Bacillus thuringiensis um, in organic gardens. So Ten caterpillars, that. right. They, yeah, yeah they, it's safe they, for they, that. They, it's safe for that. Um, so safe for fish. Feel it's safe for your fish. It's safe, you know, around your children or your pets because I don't want to put any chemicals in my yeah. pond. I would um, use it in like bird baths too, you know. Yeah, it's, just it's safe for birds. Yeah, yeah, very it's easy. A good remedy, and you can use it for natural pest control for your house plants. You can take the mosquito dunks, and you can put it in a pitcher of water and let it leach out, and then you can spray it on white flies and stuff. Oh, really? Like oh, wow! I heard of people mm -hmm. doing it. Um, you know, it's it's a thing you can try to do. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, mosquito dunks. I always use them because I just, I, ha I can't have any more mosquito bites. My poor legs look so <laughs> bad by the end of the summer. I didn't even the know summers these are, Yeah, the summers, summers are tough in the Northeast and yeah, the, and the Midwest too, United too, States. Yeah. You know, yeah. we get all our mosquitoes at once here. So, and it rains yeah. a lot here. You know, this is not the desert. The Midwest rains right. a lot. It's not like right. where Beth lives. So, yeah. Killer Kitty had a question about, um, can you keep, uh, I think, temperature? What was her question? Yeah, it was like, the, the, the will will frost kill the plants, essentially? Yes, you don't want to keep Well, I actually, there, so, so I actually want the frost to take down the hardy plants because what happens, it, it, see, there's, think of your plants as hardy plants or tropicals, right? Hardy plants are going to come back for you year after year. I actually want the frost to kill them. I want them to go through that cold cycle because th that will trigger dormancy. Yeah. So before I put them away, either underwater, if I have a big pond, or in my case, in boxes, I want the frost to take down that final foliage. Tropical plants, Kelly, are going to be a different story, of course. But Yes, and I've never grown tropical water lilies, and I've always wanted to because I've heard they... They're just, they bloom like crazy and the flowers. Kelly, are you will, Kelly, you will walk by your tub and you'll say, what is that wonderful smell? It'll be the tropical water lilies and you won't have to put your nose in it. That's sometimes wow. how one, so if you have that much sun and that much heat, you've got to grow at least one you know every what? year. Maybe I, sh maybe I should get one for this year. In a you tub. can keep it in your aquarium over the off season and wow. you can, you know, you can do, I'm, I'm overwintering one right now, right down below here. And, There's but no you know, but, in these aquariums, they are so full. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, the hard, the, aquariums. <laughs> the hard, the hard thing with tropicals, a lot of people treat them as like annuals because yeah. If you don't put them out when the water is 70 degrees or more, they trigger into dormancy. Right. And then sometimes they don't come back and then the summer's over and you get like one flower. But if you wow. put them out when your water's warm, 
I mean, there's really between the smell and how they look, it's kind of hard. And also, they flower more. That's they'll flower, weird. and they have cool colors. Like there's some that are blue, which I love. More. You can also dwarf them. Some some of them you can oh. grow in a Dixie cup and automatically dwarf because they don't have a big Great. rhizome, right? Yeah. Um, the hardiest ones to keep are known as viviparous. If you want to try a tropical, go with a viviparous water lily. Okay. These are live bearing water lilies. They grow little yeah, plants the little from plants. their leaves. They're so cute. But they take cold temperatures better. The hmm. bulletproof tropical water lily, they grow it in aquariums, is called Daubin. D A U B E N. Daubin is one of the first tropical cultivars. It's bulletproof. And you can grow it as a little mini aquarium plant. It'll grow in the shade. Tropicals can take a lot of shade too. So Stephen, we're like you are a tropical mm -hmm. like Dobbin in that tub of yours would do awesome. Well, and Stephen's growing season is so long. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we're it's in like like eight, 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 I feel like I have hardly like any time because our growing season is so short. Yep. I. I, I hear you. But, you know, that's the great thing about tubs, right? Once you're bored in, like, your fish room, yeah. you bring stuff outside. It's something new. And then by the time you're done, you're like, all right, I'm ready to bring stuff in yeah, and I mean, play with is, my fish room again. So it adds a nice break in your hobby. You know what I mean? It is I, the joy of having seasons. I do I mean, like I the idea of uh, breeding here, rainbows no. outside, though. Oh, rainbows love it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, you know, if a little powdered food helps with them and you buy three pairs, you'll probably lose two because they're jumpers. But there's some of the small varieties like the new um, are really not jumpy. Some of the smaller melatonanias. Um, well, you have will... Kalitawa. I do have Kalitawa. So what I and... would do is I yeah, would... I had Siri Creek. Yeah, I had Siri Creek. The and they were Creek uh... is a radnocentris. And those even right, right. here... Those do really well in Delta. They're great yeah. outside. Oh, my God. Yeah, they, they breed don't... like crazy. But for they your Kalitawa, if you yeah. wanted to do your Kalitawa outside, what I would do is I would I would get a mop of them, and I would get eggs on a mop. Use a uh, water hyacinth because that way, if you use water hyacinth, which might be banned where you are, but if I you can get it. where Stephen lives. <laughs> but, but if you can, but, but if, 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 if you can get some – then it'll not only be a spawny mop, it'll filter your aquarium. It'll filter yeah. your tub too. True. And you'll get flowers. It'll yeah. be a triple combo. But I then, would not put your Cali Tawa outside because they're precious. Yeah, I would, they are. I would put <laughs> if them they're in precious, a, then you want to be careful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would put them outside. in a, yeah. I Some would put them or something. a gallon tank indoors with either a mop or whatever, get eggs on them, and then transfer that outside. Yeah, it's, that's actually a great idea, Kelly. That's and that's what a lot of my friends do in Florida who are because I'm a rainbow person. These tanks right. are all full of rainbows. And that's what my friends in Florida do is they yeah. they keep their precious fish inside and they just transfer mops outside. Yeah. I've so, bred about eight species of rainbows outside, but you know, to uh, Kelly's point, only two were kind of precious. Fortunately, they were fine outside. My funniest rainbow story is I bought the uh, Melatana uh, Praycox, right? The little neon Praycox. Mm -hmm. When they first came out 20 years ago, they were all the rage. They were a big so, deal. Yeah, they but, were a big deal. So I got them really tiny. I think, and they were really small. I bought 12 of them cheap at Adams of Pet Safari, which is a great shop in New Jersey. Chester, New Jersey, Adams of Pet Safari. He imports all his own fish almost. It's just great place. So I bought a bunch of them, put them in a big stock tank. I came outside, all of them jumped out. Yo. So I'm like, all right, I'm done with this. I come back a few weeks later, there's fry swimming in there. These little guys spawned until oh, yeah. they died. That's why they, they jumped were, out. Yep. They and were like, I, uh, <laughs> but they it's such a tiny size. And then they said, you know what? Why don't we screw till we die? So that's what they did. And then they committed suicide. It was it was like yeah, this. I, I Roman pack. Need lids. And I, I got yeah. fry from it from that. But, you know, so rainbows can be jumpy. So, They're but, jumpy. you know, all of the 
cheapo pet shop varieties you can try outside, Stephen, and give them a shot because they're very active and they're wonderful mm -hmm. outside. Because I they're would so not, active. I would not breed a pet shop rainbow because if you're going to spend the time to breed a rainbow, you should breed one with good lineage that we want to continue. Well, I mean, it, I'm you a know, rainbow snob. Yeah, <laughs> well, yes. What Kelly said is, if you're planning on distributing the fish, if you're yeah. planning well, on keeping it you in know, the tank, so. you breed whatever you want to. If you're the Martha Stewart of rainbow fish, like Kelly, <laughs> and I am, <laughs> you know. But if you just want to get breeders award points at your club, um, you know, you can get some of the cheapo <laughs> Bosmanis or the Madagascar rainbows aren't as jumpy outside. Yeah, but, but I. But you know, but you know the thing is though, about I them those. Them up out the, there. Yeah, you can put them up outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, here's the thing: Do you are is is your tub? You're looking for them to be practical for breeding fish, or you want something that's enjoyable to look at. So one of the nice things about rainbows, danios, fish like that that stay at the surface of the tub is that they're interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a lot of fish we put outside that just aren't interesting outside. This is why like that's the balance that I want. Medaka. That's what I do yeah. inside right. is like I all my all my tanks are planted tanks, but I also right. want to make sure that I have fish that work with them, but fish that I like. So I can I like make a recommendation for the perfect starter tub fish is the long fin rosy barb. Rosy barbs oh. outside are unbelievable. The colors you will get from that common pet shop fish. They get a metallic and, sheen to them too. Yeah, they oh yeah, that, that they have this metallic sheen, but they won't molest their fry. You put out a trio, you will have the babies and the juveniles growing with them. So no, they're like then they're bulletproof. You can get them down to near freezing. And they'll take and you know, so they're a wonderful starter fish. They were my starter fish outside that an old tub guy told me to really start with. And I still put them out every now and then because they're beautiful. They're super active. And, you know, they're, they're just fun to too. really look at. I might, I might have a video, but, you know. And you'll always yeah. be able to sell those because they'll take one look at those at a pet store and they'll buy them. Uh, my it's thoughts so exactly, great. Brooklyn. Uh, we just went. We went to Aquafest and Brooklyn offloaded all of her uh, rosy barbs. <laughs> uh, wow. yeah. Brooklyn lives about uh, 15 minutes away from me uh, and she wants to do a tub as well. And uh, Brooklyn also said, how many tubs do I need to control the monstrous mosquitoes that we have down here in South Louisiana? Oh, God. Your I'm whole sorry. neighborhood to have a tub at least. I don't... Okay. Uh, I don't can't I don't, really help you there. Yeah, I think you need to move to Colorado. <laughs> if you want no mosquitoes. <laughs> so that is that is the long fin rosy bars, which are now in the Pethia genus. Um, they changed the genus several years ago. And that is a whole colony of parents with their juveniles. I tell you, the right? So you'll have fry and they will grow so quickly outside between wow. the heat and the live foods. Ooh, and you yeah. see how active they are. And it, it's it's a it's a it's just an easy bulletproof fish that you'll enjoy instead of going with goldfish if you don't have like Kelly does some type of aeration yeah. if you if you have a small tub. Well, also, I have a is, the other thing about gallon vessel for them. You know, mm -hmm. they have tons of water. Yeah, but see, I that's that's different. Like the, most. Most of us who are really keeping tubs and for people who are going to start, they're going to start with something small, right? They don't want to go out and buy a 300. They want to get a 20-gallon tub or a Home Depot uh, patio pond, which I highly recommend. Because if you're just starting out, it's a good way to start. The thing about the barbs that is so interesting, their biology, all of the carps, the barbs, the danios, the white cloud mountain minnows, their biology is such that they can withstand really nasty polluted water more than other fish. This is why they are, believe it or not, more species than any vertebrate on the planet Earth are in the Sabrinodontiform family of fishes because they can take a lot of bad water and take a lot of abuse better than other fishes. So they're great fish to start with. The gold barb is another easy barb you can get that does well outside. 
So, you know, there's good ways to start. And so if we're talking about how to start with tubs, don't start with the hardest stuff first, right? Start mm -hmm. with easy plants and easy, easy fish. And cheap too. Something and uh, and yeah. And, uh, I recommend the rice fish because I did those Miyuki, the plant. If you can find them. Yeah. If you, you can, can find them. Dan's fish, which I bought many fish from right. Dan's fish. Also, uh, Fox Ann is breeding some. She'll have some ready soon. But I like them because they look cool from the top, especially those Platinum Miyuki. They look so good. They're like little silver streaks going across the water. They look so good. They breed easy. They survive the winter. I'm but you have to really mail order them, right? They're they're really not available in any of the stores around that, here. So. I think that I've seen them at the Reef, which is the store in yeah. Indianapolis. So they're starting to show up in stores. Yeah. So I'm I'm just saying that if if someone's starting out, only for the people starting out, get something that's readily available, right? White cloud, golden white clouds are white good. Clouds are great. They're good you know, the only thing with you know, and white clouds you you can put out earlier because they'll breed when it's cooler and they'll stop breeding in the middle of like uh, the summer. If you're going to get plants, try to get them at a pond plant store because that way you're not going to suffer from transplant shock. Avoid these mm -hmm. boxed pond plants at Home Depot oh, those are bad. because yeah. <laughs> half of them won't sprout and the other half will not be what's on the label. So try to get yourself a live pond plant and, you know, there's different ways to plant them and just simple pea gravel with a basket will help filter your water. Make it as easy as you can the first year. Cause if it's easy, you'll do it again the next year. If you yes. make it hard, you're not going to come back. And that's the rule of any hobby. You know, sometimes you make it too hard for a, a hobbyist. We, we give them all these devices and all these recommendations and they get overwhelmed. So ideally you know, after when setting this up, I would like to not have to bring anything inside over winter. Well, you're going to be bringing in rainbow fish because Kelly's yeah. going to make you put <laughs> those mops outside. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, the barb idea is not bad. Um, you know, but your I mean, rainbow I, fish will be great to watch too, right? You will mm -hmm. see those little guys right. grow yeah. so fast outside the and it's really cool. It's really cool. Rainbows outside, those rainbows will look a thousand times better times than better, any right. other. Because I have friends in Florida who breed their rainbows outside. It, the difference is astounding. They will have siblings grown up in a tank versus mm -hmm. in a tub and it's like they're completely different fish right. they're right they grow up. faster too right so for they rainbow do, fish which faster. they smell forever yeah growing them outside is a way to accelerate the growth rate yeah, so that, that's that's not such a bad idea too you know do something idea. that interests you well, you know, it sounds like Stephen Kelly. I think Stephen needs more than one tub, don't you? I think. Well, Stephen has a very <laughs> small corner of his yard that I still think he needs more than one. I think he needs some well, in the front yard too. I mean, I think that he has room for a couple tubs. Probably. I think so too. He does not no. have room for thirty tubs. Now, but... shaded, if we go shaded tubs, then I have That's infinite true. room. Almost. The thing is, in your backyard. shaded tubs, you could do rainbows in your shaded tubs. Right. If you're doing tubs that aren't really like as much, right. look, There are plants though that will look good in the shade. So, for instance, colocasia or not colocasia, um, caladiums. I've done those in shady. Shady pond, right. and they look so like it's shady. Um, yeah. you know, uh, begonias surprisingly, begonias do great right. immersed. I did that, right. yeah, back when my pond was in the shade, like I would just experiment with things to right. see if they would grow in my bog filter, and they did. Begonias look really good, so, so you know, it, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it really all depends if, if you're going to do a mechanical filter in the shade, then you can do a lot of options. If you want to naturally filter in the shade, you want more plants than you would in a sunny location. Well, it's not so, a mechanical filter. I mean, it's it just has a right. – I mean, it's a bog. Right. It's, it's a, a bog. But I'm saying when you're, like, in the shade, you want to get plants that will, you know, filter well and can yeah. take shade, right? So yellow flag iris, it is invasive, but it's one of the few irises that will grow in the shade. Pickerel, which is – been shown to remove pollutants, including lead. 
will grow in shady uh, conditions. Lizard tail will grow in shady conditions. So plants, it depends, you know, if you want to keep that water clean, you want to go with some plants that are really going to be workhorse filters. How do you know if a plant is filtering your tub? If it reproduces itself, if it's expanding, that means that it's taking up nutrients. If it's just sitting there and not growing, then it's not a vegetative filter. So um, in my book, there's a whole section on shade plants, right? So the, the, on what plants work in the shade. But, you know, if you have room, like what uh, Kelly said, you can experiment with some other ones. Caladiums love the shade, right? They're well, basically I do. Yeah, shade I do. plants. But they're not necessarily, you know, they are not necessarily one of the prime filters, right? So it depends on, again, the type of fish you're having, how clean you want the water. With rainbow fish fry, you probably want to keep the water as clean as you can. Yeah. With rosy barbs or, or any of the sabrinids, you can fudge a little, right? Because they're pretty bulletproof. So experiment but i definitely think you need more than one tub steven i think you need that like even multiple to options tub, because <laughs> i mean i outside. that's kind of how i am indoors like i can't just have one aquarium or even three i've got I mean, 22 well, what advice that i would give anyone who's a fish person do not set up a separate fish room outside yes no i only focus on one out. and you neglect the other right Exactly. You want to you want to tear down a tank and move it outside. I see I see hobbyists do this all the time. They're burnt out, right? Make this a way for you to make your hobby easier by moving stuff outside. Don't double your efforts because unless you have time and you like doing that, frankly, I don't like to double my efforts. I got enough fish here to deal with. Steven I want to take them outside. Two jobs and two children. He can't have two fish. No. Rooms. Move yeah. it out. So do not do – so if you do a tub, find something in your fish room that you say, hey, I can put these outside. I don't have to maintain that tank during the summer. Ideally, that will make your life happier because that's what it's all about eventually. Yeah. I do so much less work on my outdoor tubs than I do on these tanks because – you know, I have rainbow fish. I've got to change the water every week. Like, do you, you break know, down tanks during the summer or do you just you know, add more outside? Three, I only have three tanks. Okay. So, so no, you're, I don't. Right, I, don't okay. breed, I don't breed fish. You don't I have mean, a fish room. No, no. I'm right. more of an aquascaper. I inject CO2 in the tanks. That's right. my, my jam. So, no, I don't tear down any tanks. And outside, last year I had three tubs. Well, I mean, they're not really tubs. One is a a pond and right. then I have one stock tank and one tub. But this year I think I'm going to upgrade that tiny uh, tub. I'm going to turn it into a bigger stock tank because I want to grow more water lilies. So I need more surface yeah. area. I mean, yeah, Mark thinks I need 20 tubs in my 15 by 15. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's kind of the problem that I had and, you know, Myrtle is probably encouraging you, which is fine. But that's, that's 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 the problem I had. There's more water lilies now. I started by putting oh, fish outside. I love water lilies. I want I got them into the water lilies, and I said I need yeah. more room for them. I so them. that's what kind of grew a lot of the tubs. And then okay, I have more tubs. I have to find some more fish. So unfortunately, it's 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 a you know, but you know yeah. I I think. I take a lot of cuttings and I bring them to the club auctions and I give them away to friends. And you know, that's just how we do it. So, indoor aquariums for me are about fifty percent the fish, fifty percent the plants. Because I really love that's my me rainbows; too. they're very important to me. But outside, I don't really care about the fish that much. It's nice. They're just there to help the plants. Ten percent the fish. The fish are there to eat mosquitoes. If they breed, I'm fine. It's really about water lilies for me. I, I just yep. want I I'm want the them all. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I really like the water lilies. And I want them all. I mean I they, want, yeah. There's something primal about a water lily, right? They're, because it was it was one of the first flowering plants, or maybe the first flowering plant. So human beings evolved with them. Lotuses, so, yeah. Lotuses are so one there's, of the first. They're, there's um, something primal. There's a primal attraction to them from humans. humans by quite a bit. I mean, they're they're from so, the Jurassic. A lot. So I, so you know, I I think when people see one. 
it, it's very hard not to have your heart softened by one. So you'll start out by putting fish outside, but I think that tub you have, Stephen, if you get Dobbin where you are because it's nice and warm, um, because some of the hardies are really cold hearted, they actually don't like it too hot. But if you can get some uh, some nice water lily that for for that tub of yours, you probably won't go back. You'll be joining uh, the rest of us here as a, a water lily fan. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is like I'm. I can send you water lilies free because I, yep. I have to divide mine. Yeah. I just have to get so, set up for it. You know, but, like, I mean, that, really tub, really easy. that tub itself will be replaced. You and Berkeley will tub. both have tubs and, you know, it will change your life for the better because you'll have a reason to go outside for five minutes a day. And then you'll start sleeping at night because you'll have sun and they'll regulate your circadian rhythm. <laughs> You're going to be a happier wow. person. Right, I'm just changing your life here, Stephen. Just one tub. So <laughs> Kelly, right. so Kelly is like your Svengali fish person now. Yeah, she <laughs> always you know, she likes to get me to spend money too. Oh, it's so true. I have made Stephen spend so much money. <laughs> wow, she must be real popular with like your family then, huh? It's like, sorry, <laughs> kids, no uh, Christmas this year, yeah, and Kelly I, I mean, made me buy stuff. Love. Me, Jenna, Stephen's wife, Jenna, she loves me, even though I have spent and a lot of my her wife money. is also into like she's also a fish keeper, she likes to fish in the she plants, does. Too, so. yeah. And I think Jenna would enjoy the tub too because they'd be beautiful flowers right by the door where she walks in every day. Mm -hmm. So, wow. It would make Jenna's life better too. Jake actually, he Kelly, can't. you're an enabler, and enablers oh are wrong. Yeah. Kelly I'm the and I are completed enablers. Yeah. All look <laughs> like the majority of my friends are in this fish keeping community. They're all enablers. I just it's true, but outside. I feel like I'm on another level of enabling. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have made Myrtle spend a bunch of money, I think, because it's I was tagging she, with, keeps, ta she yes. keeps tagging me in plant auctions. So every time she sees a new stem or a new rhizome, um, I know. I and Myrtle's up. like, I'm a college student, I live in a dorm. My tank is this big. Yep, I don't have 63 them. tanks anymore. I just have the two. <laughs> well, would you guys mind if I just gave a word of caution? I always do yeah, this okay. when I give my talk. And I think, you know, I just, we just want to, I want to give one thing here. Because we're talking about tubs and, and the families and all. So I want to try to show something here, if I can. You can see this. This was my 22-year-old son when he was two or three. Um, you can see this, right? Yes. So here's the thing. When you have tubs, you got to be careful because they are low to the ground. If you have children, children are curious. Even like a six-year-old, if he falls headfirst in that tub, he can't get out, right? Because their legs are short. So they're, 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 you have to, if you have young children, I generally recommend that you put some type of fencing around your tub or just be careful around it. You know, there's a reason why swimming pools have insurance and fences around them. Right. But tubs are just at the height where they can go in. So I always give that caution. Now, here's the other caution. This is my son, and this was one of my early tubs back in the mid-90s. It's just like, Stephen, what, 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 what you were saying. It's just a tote that wasn't designed to be a tub. Mm. And you'll notice all the duckweed yep. and the water lettuce, but you'll note, and there's snails in here. Do you notice there's like a empty space in the middle, guys? Mm -hmm. And you notice where my son's other hand is? Oh, no. <laughs> so we changed a green diaper with snail shells for about three days afterwards. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh. Now, oh. duckweed is actually now considered a superfood. Yeah, yeah I was say, at least it's duckweed, uh, not like but, or something. You know, I can think of all the probiotics that went into his system when that happened there. So I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, Stephen's children point. are are older, so nine I, and I am, eleven. So they're yeah, yeah. I am con I am very confident your children are not going to eat duckweed. <laughs> well, actually, supposedly, if you boil it, is how they say you can like eat it now. Well, wolfia, which is the the water, wolfia. that it's is a, a, a superfood. 
Yeah. Thanks to Steven about that for making smoothies out of it. It's very nutritious. Wait a minute, hold on. You've actually tried it, Kelly? No, I don't have yeah. I never have Fess it. up. Fess up. No, I never I can't grow duckweed. I have no talent for it. But Steven had some of it and I sent him the link for Wolfia smoothies, but I don't think he tried it. Well, I I'm think Wolfia really free now, so it has not I, it's not come back for me to see it at least. So. Can we do like a taste test one night? We can all try like a Wolfia smoothie and and I mean I would like try and... it. I mean, I mean I'd try anything. Yeah. It probably just tastes like I green. Try it. Like probably yeah, that's what I imagine it. duckweed tastes like. It's just it up green. Vegetables, probably. Jake Bitter would try green. it because Jake will take Jake will have any supplement or medicinal powder or mm. if if there's like some men's magazine that it says it gives you bigger biceps, he'll totally have it. I mean he doesn't care how bad it tastes. So <laughs> yeah. But yeah. uh, hang on, I think you need to here. tell him then that uh, blood worms are great for men's health. Oh, and I just want to see, I, 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 I want to see if he'll eat them because that would I be don't know. Awesome. Yeah, I would one, three. I'm allergic to them, two, I, I, I me too. If I wasn't, I'll draw the line. Yeah. On that. Me too, I'm allergic to blood worms. Yeah, I, I break be, out bad, and I would you know. be afraid he would develop an allergy because he is well, okay. Well, then you know, tell him, you know, hey, I heard tube effects are nutritious. Oh. I just want to see how much he'll actually eat. So, you know, you know. I. I uh, would like to be able to kiss him, so, <laughs> so I don't know if Bex's husband Kyle has uh, agreed to this, but she's he will, him he to eat some duck weight. Bex, you have duck weed, right? No, we want to yeah, yeah, courtesy of me. I've sent her plants, and so therefore I've sent her duck weight. <laughs> Tell him that sprinkling extreme nano pellets on his oatmeal in the morning is supposedly really good for you. I I want to see if you'll eat it. Uh, I'm just I'm just curious, you know. It's. I mean, he there. Have you ever heard of maca root powder? Yeah. It's the most disgusting substance on earth. <laughs> but he was convinced it, and this was early in our relationship. And I thought, well, as a couple, we will have maca root together. Oh boy. And I got a package of it and he got a package of it. And I tried to put some of it in like a, I don't know, a smoothie or something. I was dry heaving. So I gave <laughs> up. On it. And he tried to have maca root for, I think, two weeks. And it's so bad. We put some of it in waffles because I oh, put some in because I'm like, well, let's put some in waffles, see how they, oh God, it, it was the worst smelling thing I've ever made. <laughs> Did you try deep frying it? That usually makes things better. <laughs> so let me hold on a second. Note to self: if Kelly invites you to a barbecue, say no. She's got extra maca root to offer. <laughs> okay, okay. I, uh, made that note. No. That note. Note n noted. I uh, I threw the maca root out because I mean, if you, if something makes you dry heave, like. You it's just, not worth it. You just can't. I don't care how good it is for you. It's not worth it. So There's people that have that effect on me too. I mean, he says she takes maca root daily. Yeah, Brooklyn. Waiting, Brooklyn Brooklyn has a for stronger for stomach than I do. Maybe she encapsulates it. I don't know because it's disgusting. So There's um people that actually make me like dry heap too. So I mean, you know, it can't <laughs> be, especially when you go to some of these uh fish conventions, I'm like, "Whoa, guy, it's it's like, you know, there's this thing called bathing." <laughs> <laughs> showering is good we're we're pro shower no brooklyn says it has a nutty flavor i don't agree with that the stuff oh I the learned... word nutty flavor is used anything that tastes like crap oh it's got an earthy nutty flavor yeah it tastes I like mean, earth, mushrooms yeah, the stinky cheeses they all say they taste nutty yeah, and... it's so earthy and nutty i eat plenty of grains and nuts and seeds that are okay, this whole show is 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 de evolving into what our excrement is like. So I think we need to <laughs> move it to a to a back up the food chain. So. <laughs> to our ponds, to our ponds. So yeah, it's. Are there any more chat questions from there? Well, from the let's, come in let's or? go back. So, duckweed and brine shrimp smoothies is what yeah. Barbara yeah. Jackson proposes. Boy, oh, there you go. We've, we've, we're going down that road. I told you it's a slippery slope. 
Oh yeah, the chat just goes with the flow and the Scott chat, is suggesting the, the is... hospitality room. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A challenge Ooh. after because it, it's uh yeah, Kelly, you and Ted and Susan and who was the other one? Peter something or other. I do not know. I don't know Peter. So Nietzsche Peter. Sounds like a challenge in the hospitality room after mm -hmm. the panel chat. Yeah, so Kelly I, Pete Nietzsche. The horticulturists from Rutgers and Sue Harkey are doing a panel together, all four of us, um, at the Keystone Clash in September. That is a great convention, Kelly. Right? I mean, looking at it, I went last year, and all, yeah, I'm all giving four of us will be status. there. Yeah, Kelly. Right, Mark. Kelly's giving two talks. Um, mm -hmm. And two. Did you guys? Talks. Did you guys go last year? I'm sorry, I, I, I forget. Didn't. I I'm I just fine. I didn't. I did not know what you looked like, so we didn't meet, but I was. Oh, that's there. funny. Wasn't that vendor and showroom unbelievable? It I was. thought that was great. I, um, I judged. <laughs> so they had me judge some classes. The show was like 350 entries, which is awesome. And they had to turn away people. So the fish show itself is great. And they said, hey, Ted, can you judge uh, the library class? Because I used to be the editor of the ALA journal. I said, yeah, I'll, I said, don't give me guppies, though, because guppies is a whole nother way to judge. Yeah, they gave me they gave me 41 entries. I'm like, are you serious? Wow. I was there for two hours. Oh, my I'm like, gosh. I'm like, holy cow. So it's a great if you can make the trip, you can hear Kelly do her um, talks. Two but talks. it's a very yeah, wonderful yeah. social event. People, yeah. You get to meet other people. It's a fun weekend, and it's the Keystone Clash. You can go to their website, learn more about it. The hotel is decent, very, very nice and spacious. Um, it's going to be great. great Stephen, are you going again this year? Oh, absolutely. It's, it, like We went for the first time last year, and uh, my wife Jenna and I decided it's going to be an annual thing for us for sure. How about you, Myrtle? Can we convince you to go possibly? I couldn't We've been go trying. last year because of classes. I am planning on going this year as long as my schedule doesn't have a weekend class scheduled. Well, you know something? I would say that if, if folks who are local, even if you go for one day, like your first day, <laughs> it's still worth it. You know, even if you can just go on the Saturday, mm -hmm. you can hear uh, Kelly's talks, you can visit the amazing vendor and showroom. Um, and it'll be, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really great time. So, yeah. you know, it's those type of things, the fish events, we don't have them like we used to, they used to be all over the country. The Keystone clash is the only one now in the entire Northeast mid Atlantic. It's the only fish show around anymore. It's worth going. So I highly recommend it. You can fly into Harrisburg, uh, to get there as well. So, Kelly and I will be hanging out wreaking havoc. Kelly and I are going to wreak havoc. It's going to be terrible. It's That's going to be. Right. Yeah. We're going I'm to be sorry. thrown out of there. We're I'm going to be thrown out, Kelly. <laughs> I'm actually going to drive because it's only eight and a half hours for us. So. Oh yeah, yeah. You you Not do so like far. a road trip. Now, How Stephen, I heard. I'm going to drive. Jake is going to drive. I'm not going to drive. He's going. Now, drive. Stephen, I heard that Kelly, when she's in the hospitality room, she curses like a sailor. So I, I don't do. know if that's true, and she starts <laughs> knife fights with me. Oh, well, we know Kelly. She's a she's a big drinker, right? Yeah. So <laughs> I heard. I yeah. She gets drunk and she curses. Yeah. It's Dude, it's I so curse, but so. <laughs> Myrtle and Stephen and I, our job is to kind of control her from yes, just going out of it, control. Make sure I get to my talks, you know. You know, because we got to, you know, put lots of coffee in her on, on you know, Saturday or, or something. Because she's going to just, you know. up in front of it. I can, uh, yeah. 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 So and Bex I'm went as a vendor with last her year. her husband, Kyle. Yeah, but she was a vendor last year, and mm -hmm. she missed a lot of the You were a vendor today. last year, Kelly? No, yeah, no, 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 no. I think that Bex was. So oh, Bex, Bex um, sold her arts. She, um, mm -hmm. Oh, I remember her. Yeah. Oh, I arts her yeah, arts. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, great. But this but, year she is just coming to have fun. Yeah. Do you right. know that they had to turn away people who wanted to vend? That's how many vendors they had. And they're actually going to expand the room this year. And, uh, right. Hobby and it's going to be crazy. Grand it's good. Fun. And you better get your tables now if you're watching the Garden of Eater. 
you hear that. Are you thinking of entering in the Aquascape contest? Um, I might judge the Aquascape contest. That would be great. Yeah, I do not have time to participate in it. I mean, I'm giving two talks right. to panel chats. So you I, are going to judge possibly? Possibly. If Scotty wants me to judge, there has been oh, talk right. that I will judge. I, I would like to judge. I enjoy being judgmental. So, um, <laughs> and my wife was in the Aquascape contest uh, last year. And is she doing it again, or are you doing no, it? No, no, neither of us are doing neither it. It, well, it sold out. The the, it the sold out for the, the contest. Yeah, within yeah, like it, half an hour. Sold it out. Long. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, no, I I I I have been in Aquascaping contest before. Yeah, and me I've too. Judged yeah. Them. I've judged them before too. So. Um, I actually don't really enjoy doing contests aquascaping. I don't. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Just, Physically. A lot of pulling have, of stuff. You, you got to hold have, stuff. Yeah, and you can't have fun mm -hmm. because you're so busy and it's so. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. So um, yeah. I, certainly I will also encourage people, you know, um, you might not think your fish can win at a show. When I'm involved in shows for about 35 years, you would be surprised. You'll go to a fish show and you'll look at a, a certain class. Remember, there's going to be like 60 classes of fish. So you put your fish in the class it belongs to and you'll go, I have a fish at home that could have won in this class or come in third. Well, the yes. rainbow fish. Uh, I encourage people to bring to bring a fish to the show if you can. And I might bring a fish. I don't know. I might bring. Oh, bring a fish. I bring a rainbow. See, that's what I, I worry about. Like the fish, the fish that I know would absolutely win are the fish that I'm kind of like, I don't want to take them anywhere. Like I'm, I get worried about them. Well, that's why you only take one. Mm -hmm. You only take one. I mean, but my, oh gosh, you know, if you have a rainbow fish that's been growing for four years, like you don't want to risk moving. Um, but yeah. I know, I know that the rainbow category last mm. year was left a lot to be desired, and I could bring. Yes, yeah. yeah. and um, I'm an admin on Rainbow Fish Live, which is a Facebook group of over ten thousand people worldwide. Which and means I that you could have won. It's a great group, and I've been promoting the Keystone Clash on there because I'm hoping we'll have more rainbows represented there. That so, Kelly, okay, it sounds like knowing Scotty and knowing Scotty, who gets very little sleep and is probably watching, he's probably going to ask you to judge the rainbow class because I mean, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, Bentley right. Pasco. Ben, well, Bentley Pasco is speaking there. He's a rainbow guy. Um, Dan of Dan's Fish. He could also good. judge it. So, so good, yeah, that was good because I had my my friends Pete Nietzsche, Paul Nietzsche, their brothers who were speaking with, and Sue Harkey speaking with. They 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 judge. I think they had to judge the rainbows, the and the uh, Sabrina days, and the uh, Carisids. And um, it was <laughs> we were there a long time. You know, yeah, when you so we when you judge it. fish, it's got to be process of elimination. You can yeah. easily eliminate which fish aren't going to make the top three. But yeah. I tell you, there was some fabulous looking fish at that show, Stephen. Right? I mean, they were there was some. Oh, yeah. That yeah. sword tail almost won first place. I've never seen a a liar tail sword that big before in my entire life. I mean, it was truly amazing. I might judge the plants. I could judge that if they wanted me to judge something. I also will probably enter plants. So, yeah, I could bring plants then, for sure. Because I have, uh, obviously, I grow a lot of plants. But mm -hmm. uh, Keystone Clash, Clashy, as we like to call Clashy, is says that I will be hosting morning yoga at the Keystone Clash. So, who is that? Best, everyone. Morning yoga. Okay. Okay. Morning yoga and fish people. Those are two words that kind of don't go together. But I, they do for this person. But yeah. you know, I, uh, I if you want to try yoga. it, go ahead. I frankly, I, I, I can't unsee that now. I can't <laughs> unsee. Kelly fish does people yoga. doing yoga and some I of the fish people. My, uh, I'll wear my it's what's the fish yoga pants. Burnt in my memory now. And thank you for posting that because I'm going to have nightmares tonight now. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, you know, I've had requests to teach yoga. I'll do it. No, that no, that's fine. If you want to teach yoga, I'm thinking that there's, I'm not thinking of you. I'm thinking of some other fish people <laughs> doing yoga. And it's like, okay. <sighs> 
Yoga <laughs> right. for everyone. There's certain people you don't want to see in yoga pants, but you know, there's yeah. certain people in this fish fam who need to do yoga, and that Next is all of you. As soon as possible, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there yeah, was Scotty a is not <laughs> sleeping because Scotty has a stream in five minutes. That's right. Oh, God, yeah. So we're so. Um, by the way, we're all doing a pool. When will Scotty have his first stroke? Because he's currently working at the aquarium. He's vice president of Bucks County. He's president of Lancaster, and he's running the Keystone Clash. So, Scotty, if you're listening, there is an over and under on you. There is a pool, so we have dates. People are picking Scotty dates. So, should, uh, I want you to prove them all wrong. I I want you to tell Kelly that you're going to do some yoga. Right. And I want you to try to, you I know, delegate as much as possible. Work. Delegate, delegate, because we don't I, want to burn you out. Well, I mean, Scotty does have help right now. Um, Annette is doing a lot of work for the Keystone Clash. And Jenna, so Jenna, P, yep. Jenna is doing lots of work. So this time he has <laughs> some really good helpers. If you've yeah. been enjoying all of the uh, social media, someone is doing that. We won't say who. But there is a helper doing that. It's not Scotty. So he has had some good helpers this time. Good. Excellent. And I was going to say, I can't in good conscience bet on that, given that Scotty has survived a heart He's attack already. already. A heart attack. <laughs> That's We're why gonna I have... Scotty to do yoga, so he can nope. learn. Some I'm very things. happy here that Scotty has help and and now because that that definitely makes me feel a lot better. Yeah, so, yeah. he has some very good helpers. So. That's he does. Scotty could use more help and he could use help, especially on the day setting up. So make Scotty sure he does, does a tremendous amount of good work yeah. for the organized yeah. hobby. He, he really is uh, mm -hmm. the savior of a lot of clubs. And it's hard to think there would be a Keystone Clash without him. He's so amazing. my big, big props and uh, thank you to uh, Scotty there. Yeah. So. And if you want to sponsor the Keystone Clash, there's still the um, sponsors are needed. Um, yeah. People have sponsored my my uh, expenses to be transported there, which is very nice of people. Um, Dee Dee is in the chat. Dee Dee's one person who sponsored me. Um, but there's lots of things you could sponsor um, a show class of a fish. Mm -hmm. That's um, right. You can sponsor the aquascaping competition. It costs a lot of money to put that on the hospitality room. So if you have the money to sponsor the Keystone Clash, even even five dollars helps. Any so, amount helps, and they do a right. wonderful hospitality room. They were so generous with that, um, and it was a lot of fun. So. So, so we will be hanging out there, Kelly, and we yeah, will try to, you know, look forward you know, to it. Um, and, uh, you know, you from the alcohol and uh, in the evening, I don't so. drink actually. So, yeah, I was, this, yeah, that's why I was being sarcastic because Kelly, is I know I don't drinker. drink. So, yeah, you know, yeah, Jake and I don't drink. So, yeah. we've heard that one for Kelly yeah. and Jake. Drew, I don't. So, but I, I and I, I've met Stephen before, but I have yet to meet Myrtle in person. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping wow, Myrtle. Oh yes, so. you have to drive over Myrtle. I do plan oh. on. If I do. Good. Drive, it, classes. Uh, Come uh, on, I would never. It's about an hour or two, I think. Last time okay, I did, yeah, it's, 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 it's 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 yeah, it's probably just like a couple hours. I'm not mm -hmm. sure, yeah. but it's not bad. Um, worth it, even even for the day, if you want to get up real early mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. But but we hope you can go the whole time. You know? oh, that would be even better you know, if I could just do the whole thing. Oh, just, but just don't wear the suit. I want to say oh, no, this is only with me. This, I'll have a what the fish t shirt underneath it, but I will have the suit. You I want to see where to wear the suit. The suit is his <laughs> signature look. So. That's right. Well, that's, that's true. You know, if you want the fanboys, you got to wear the suit. <laughs> if you want to be the suit, the fish t shirt. Or the fish shirt, like this is, you know, you'll blend right in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we all need to go to Scotty's stream yeah. right now. He is having a stream after that. So with that, thank you so much, Ted, for joining us. It was a lot of fun. We've a lot of fun having you. Thank you, mods. We always appreciate your hard yeah. work. Thank you, super chatters. Um, thank you, Lurkers. Thank you, Replay Crew. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. We always appreciate your comments. So, 
Thank you very much, everybody. And yeah, we'll see you over uh, at Scotty's stream. Bye. Take care, everyone. Take care, Bye. everyone. Have a good evening.